I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order at this time. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, Stand over here so uh, everybody can see the screen. Um, but it's my pleasure to be introduce the board of directors for this year. Our vice president is Ken Horn. Ken is an avid fisherman. Many of you know and see him around on the lakes out here. He's also the liaison to both the architect committee and the Parks and Recreation Committees. Our treasurer, Jeff Fuel, at the far end down there. Uh, Jeff originally moved here to the Hidden Valley back in 1998 and was an active volunteer for 13 years. His, uh, he found it necessary to relocate in order to care for his mother. Uh, and then he moved back to HVL just a few years ago. Jeff brings a lot of experience to the board. And he's liaison to two committees, the Finance Committee and the Legs Committee. <clears throat> Our secretary is Donna Yetzer. Donna has been a very active volunteer for many years in Hidden Valley Lake. He brings a wealth of experience uh, from her previous jobs in uh, has been able to assist our board. Donna is liaison to safety, security, and elections committee. And our member at large is Grant Smiley. Grant grew up uh, skiing out here on our main lake. And Grant also brings a great deal of experience to the board. Grant is liaison to the future planning committee. I also need to address a couple of things that uh, there's been communication spread around through Hidden Valley about your current elected board members that are not true. I'd like to address them now. It is reported on social media that Ken Horn was wrong to accept signs that advertised his candidacy for election to the HVL Board of Directors. The HVL Fish and Game Club supported Ken and ask him to represent them. The club decided to purchase the now controversial sign. Our POA attorney, Jared Eubank, has investigated this and after reviewing all of our legal documents, came back and told us that Ken was not wrong to accept this donation. As a matter of fact, clubs in HVL are free to raise funds and then to spend those funds as they see fit. Bluetooth, ready for connection. Have jurisdiction over the funds in any of our clubs. <clears throat> on another subject that's been reported, particularly on Facebook, that I held a secret meeting to promote myself to be president. This statement is not true. Actually, there were two meetings. <laughs> The first meeting was held between Doug Gabbert and Jeff Fuel to discuss Doug Gabbert being president. The second meeting was held between Jeff Fuel, Doug Gabbert, and Ken Horn to again discuss Doug being the president. I found out about that meeting about an hour before it happened, and I invited myself to that meeting. <clears throat> when I arrived, Doug Gabbard was easy, un I'm sorry, Doug was uneasy about my attending the meeting. So I offered to leave. After a bit of discussion, Doug asked me to stay. Doug described his coming agenda for the for the new year 
that he wanted to be president. And the reason that he wanted to be president was to improve relations between committees and the board. And I told him, I think that's a great thing, but I also think that we have a lot more pressing things to be working on uh, outside of improving relations between the board and, the commit and committees. Uh, I think that's a very important thing. I think we really need to do that, but we also have to be looking at our finances. And so for that reason, I, I ask that they consider me to be the president because I think our priority needs to be a focus on our finances. There's a many other things that we got to look at in the coming year, like the golf course, the finances for the golf course. We don't plan to do a lot on our roads this year because the fiber people are tearing up our roads, but there's an awful lot that needs to be done in the coming future. And we need to be prepared for those costs. Uh, over the past few years, the POA has provided many new updates and replacements. Many of these projects, such as dredging the lake, the marina docks, building and replacing shelters, have cost the POA many more dollars than anticipated, primarily due to inflation. That has been increasing over the past few years. Have you noticed that the portalettes are gone? This is something that we worked on several years ago that we felt like was a very worthy project was to have actual working restrooms. A lot of the neighbors complained about having a portal at, at the beach. Um, so anyway, those things are hopefully improved to everybody's satisfaction, but they cost a lot of money. Over the last 10 years, we have spent roughly $3.3 million on improvements such as that. As you've witnessed, we have been having problems with our mowing contractors. The current problem is that they have an all new and experienced team. There have also been problems in the past, but TR Gear used to have a supervisor who lived here in the Valley who made most of those kind of problems disappear pretty quickly before we realized there were even a problem. Getting back, uh, inflation is and continues to be our greatest hurdle. The mowing contractor has a seven year contract and that new will be replaced with a new contract sometime in the near future. And since this was a seven year contract, I think we're in what day five or five, fifth year, you know, the people are no doubt uh, having difficulty making a profit on, you know, so in the future, we're gonna have probably have contracts that are even more expensive than that one was. In the past, our treasurer and finance committee have always viewed our cash on hand as three separate funds. However, due to accounting rules, they have been reported as one number instead of three. The funds have always been commingled, which causes questions and confusion, especially among those people who are not closely involved. Having the three funds together makes the number look large, and really, it is not. Our normal day-to-day -day operation cost averages more than $200,000 a month. That includes things like Rumpke at 30,000 bucks a month, but it does not include major expenses like replacing a pool liner or buying a new vehicle. Our treasurer has asked that these funds should have a separate designation and the finance committee agrees. In the future, our funds will be reported on as separate entities in compliance with section two of our bylaws specifically bylaws 2-3-5 and 2-3-6. Those funds being operating cash, cash reserved for emergencies, and cash reserved for escrow. Escrowed funds are amounts set aside each year based on life expectancy 
to assure the repair or replacement of needed equipment and amenities, such as pole liners, vehicles, road paving, et cetera. Our current bylaw 2.3-6 requires that we have two months of operating expenses in our emergency reserve funds. We can never predict an emergency. We can only be prepared for one. Currently, our emergency reserve fund is zero. In case of an emergency event, the funds that we should have would still be spent very quickly if there was an emergency. Thank you for attention and now for the treasurer's report. Thank you, Bob. Okay. So the treasury report here for uh, today, May 25th, 2023, the cash position as of March 31st, 2023, it's $548,441. And the cash position of April 30th, 2023 is 4,059, oh, sorry, 4,059,000. Okay. 884. Anybody else want to take over? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Now, as Bob would talk to you, you know, these are the figures that we've always been given out, which don't show 100% the different areas like the emergency fund, you know, the ESPER reserves, you know, the daily operation. And we will be breaking that down. Okay. Uh, I want to bring up the... Uh, Okay, this is typical stuff. So, of course, you know, everything is narrowed down to the uh, nearest dollar. Go to the next slide. Though. So, what you're looking at here, and I've done some of these charts in the past a little bit. This is a little bit of uh, Thank you. I forgot to bring this with me, Rich. Okay. So, this kind of tells you, you know, cash on hand. No, it's not for you. This is for everybody that's online, okay? So, so basically, if you, if you see through the years, you know, where our total was compared to where it's been. And as you can see, we're spending more than we have. You know, um, in the past years, it's been, you know, we've been a little bit spoiled you know we've had some good uh reserves we've had the money for to do what we needed to do we actually you know got back this one's not working at all all right try that you can use both of them there you go there's a ah uh, okay stereo okay thanks um you know but as things you know get more cost every year. We know that. Okay. And what's been happening is we've been kind of lax a little bit and nobody wants to increase. But what happened is we did have some major expenses through the years and things have come down. Well, so we cut, look how much we spent this year. Okay. And we started coming up a little bit, but then the inflation really hit drastically and we had some expenses that we had to do. You know, we did some repairs on roads and it wasn't, you know, being able to pave the whole area. What it was is to dig down. So the um, task force, of uh, they actually looked at different areas where the base was the main issue. So they had to dig down and take care of the base and build that back where it will maintain itself. And then when we get the funds to pave over it, it's going to last if we continue to leave it go, it would cost us more the following year, okay? So, and let's go to the next slide. Oh, you already got it. So here's some of the items. You can kind of see the dollar amounts through the years and the different items that we've been using. And again, 21, you know, the past boards have been trying to really get it back and they were really feeling like they were going to pick it here. Then the inflation, though, on top of it is a major issue. Okay, so it's it's you know it's obvious it's gonna cost. Okay, and and, and uh we're looking at some increases, we're looking at some assessments coming up, and we'll be voting on some of those things and discussing it. 
Um, I think the past and present boards have been working with finance for over a year and a half at least, and have really been fighting every way we can to cut costs, okay, through the past year and a half plus. Um, um, I just hope you continue to help support us on what we need to do for the Valley a long time. Everybody has needs, and those are number one. You have wants, yes, the needs to maintain this place. This is this is a, a special place to live, and anybody that's been here for years, you know it. Um, so that's my report. Thank, Thank you, you, Jeff. Who gets all these mics? <laughs> I don't know. Donna. <laughs> I got my own thing. <laughs> Okay, Donna, the secretary's report, please. I would like to ask for a motion to approve the April 27, 2023 minutes. I'll, I'll make that motion. Thank you, Ken. I'll second. Thanks, Jeff. And voting? I'll say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Did you have anything else on? No, that's it. Thank you. Uh, community manager's report, David. <clears throat> I've got a microphone and it's not working. <laughs> you got a microphone. Where's your other one? You know, ever since I first saw that Mr. Microphone commercial, <laughs> I wanted to have a microphone in my hand. Okay, well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, a golf course report, first of all, I wanted to uh, ask you to keep in mind uh, Jason Gad and, and your thoughts and prayers. He is uh, uh, undergoing treatment for stage four cancer. He's our golf course maintenance superintendent. And unfortunately, he's now in hospice. Uh, uh, I met with him yesterday. And he, though he knows uh, what he's facing, is in very good spirits. Um, he's just taking each day as it comes. So please keep him in your prayers and thoughts. Um, uh, things get a little bit of real when you uh, look at the situation that he's facing today. A uh, little bit of information on uh, how the golf course is doing. Uh, we've had some successes, especially this year with yeah. our 10 pay or 10 play passes, as you can see in the slide. Uh, and we also have some new uh, outings that, that they've started up this year. Under my community manager's report, um, we accepted a bid uh, from our last meeting from Isidore to replace the HVAC unit, and that has been installed. Our mowing contractor uh, uh, has completed most of the mowing. There's still some touching up to do, still some areas that, that they have to get to. Uh, my biggest concern has been the dam. That's going to be the hardest thing to, to get someone to, to uh, mow. Uh, they've at least had it mowed twice now, so uh, they they have to get the, uh, the uh, that's, that's a big concern too. So uh, we're uh, moving forward. We continue to expect better service. We expect better uh, conditions, uh, the trim, things like that have to be done. And they've assured me that they'll honor their commitment. So we uh, we will keep on them. Uh, the issue is, is we have a contract with with these folks. We have to honor our side of that contract. They have to honor theirs, and uh, we've we've had our attorney involved, and and we've done the things on our end that have to be done. So, uh, fiber optics. We uh, we have a new contact people from the engineering company. Uh, they're called NRTC. If you see the red trucks around, that's. Uh, that's that company. They are the overall engineers of the entire project. And uh, we have been and we will continue to work with them to make sure these restorations, yard restorations, things like that are done and they're done properly. We've uh, we've pushed on that and we've, we've continued to get insurances that those will be done, but uh, timing is 
as bad on some days. Your maintenance team continues to work on the annual sprucing up and preparing the beach and pool for summer. Uh, your security team, as I reported at the annual meeting, uh, have a new look. Uh, Chief Jason Hoffman is in the room today if you want to see him afterwards. Uh, <clears throat> I really appreciate the, uh, what he and his staff have done to uh, provide security. Um, uh, and he's more than willing to uh, discuss the status of his team. He's, uh, he's got a very good crew he's assembled, and he's done that work mostly himself, gathering these, these uh, folks together. He's, he's really done a good job getting our security team. Uh, Memorial Day, we ask you to please plan to attend the Memorial Day weekend events, uh, which will be on Sunday, beginning at noon with, uh, with the service for the veterans. At the 77 acres at 1 p.m., HVL riders will again lead a parade through Hidden Valley Lake. And there will be a concert that evening beginning at 5. Is Andy here somewhere? I think I said it right, 5 o'clock. And finally, I wanted to let you know, uh, remind you that the office will be closed on Monday for Memorial Day. So that's all I have. Thanks a lot, Dave. Moving on to uh, committee and club reports, architectural, Tom Frost. Thank you, Bob. Uh, architecture this month has uh, four property bond return requests for the board to look, to look at. Um, I will preface this by saying that there are no dues, fines, or fees owed on uh, any of these properties. Uh, I'll go through all four of them and then ask the board to uh, approve them in one vote. Uh, we'll start with lot number 3185. The address is 1523 Kathy Court, property owners Brenton and Erica Tishbein. Uh, the bond amount is $500. Uh, number two is lot number 1420, property address 20616, Longview Drive, property owners Jeffrey and Michelle Trevet. Bond amount $500. Uh, lot number 2471. Address 20141 Firewood Way. Linda Hartman is the property owner. Bond amount $500. And finally, lot 1391. Uh, address 20374 Bovista. Property owner Dino Hassan. Bond amount $500. Thank you, Tom. Do we have a motion to return? I'll make the. Okay, Grant, did you make that? I'll second it. Okay, that's all we have. Does anyone have any questions for architecture? You got to do a vote, Bob. Yeah. Oh, I believe they did. Just give did me they not? To see if there was any oh, okay. Thank you. So, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Finance Committee report, Kyle. <laughs> Hello. Uh, let's see. Okay, I've got two things to vote on. Uh, the first one is we're adding a new member, uh, John DeCosca. He's met the requirements at the finance committee level, and we've approved for him unanimously. So, you guys want to vote on that one first? Yeah. Yes. I'll so, first it. Are we? That's fine. Are we, we have to prove that. You do. No, you're yeah. fine. No, you have to approve. Yes. Oh, we do. We do. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So Jeff makes the motion. Yes. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Ken Horn seconds the motion. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then the second one is kind of following up on Jeff's comments. So we've been working very closely with the board since about June of last year, finance committee and the board, uh, to such a degree that we've had joint meetings with the board and the whole finance committee. So we've been trying to figure out the dues and assessments. And so the recommendation that's coming basically at this point in time is we are wrecking with a $300 one-time assessment to kind of boost our reserves. The way we get a one-time bill in the month of August, it'll do be due by October 31st. So that's the first piece of it. 
And the second piece of it to try to keep up with inflation and how expenses are going is we will be looking for a 10% dues increase in the month of January. So that's the recommendation. Okay. And that's been approved unanimously at the committee level. Do we, uh, do we have a motion? I'll, um, I'll motion it. Okay, I'll second yeah. it. Donna seconds it. Any discussion? Yeah, I've got a question. Yeah. Lots of, uh, you guys made this. We need microphones. You all need the other here. No, you need a microphone. Don Donaldson, Lot 2058. Yeah. You guys are making these decisions. You're going you're to charge us $300 more plus increase our dues. Yep. I mean, I know Jason and everything, but we've got a lot of other issues besides you try to spend all our money. We we also got issues as far as making our bills meet too. So, I mean, you, you probably ought to ask instead of make these decisions. I mean, I know you guys are in this position, but you ought to at least ask us as residents here. The, the problem is there's no money. I get it. Yeah, well, Did you but, see my banking account? <laughs> well, I I understand. I mean, we're all in a tight situation. We all got to, you know, we, I, get, I get we want the beautiful lake and everything like that. Yeah, but we are too. I mean, you said it. You're, you're 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 trying to get blood out of current. A lot of a lot of cases around here. We're all dealing with inflation. Exactly. And we do understand that. Here. Right. Sure. You know, I mean, I nothing personal. Well, I was going to bring up a situation. We don't have the, the police here anymore. The security they can't rewrite tickets. I'm wondering if the stop signs and the speed limit signs are just suggestions around here. Yep. I mean, to be honest with you, I can sit at my house and watch 90% of the cars blow from the stop sign. I've got a car pushing me down the road on my motorcycle. I'm doing 30. Yeah, I'm speeding. He'll be. But I've got cars flying up on me at 60. We've got no security here. And you guys want more money to, 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 to cut grass and stuff. I get it. I'll come out here with weed if you want. You know you ought, to, you ought to at least ask us instead of saying, hey, we're going to spend your money. At least have a photo. Gentlemen in the back. Paul Neilander, Lodge 441442. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, when does the increment for the golf course buyout go off the books? Is it 10 years version? 10? Was it 10 or 15? It's well, it was originally 15. I believe it was originally a 15 year. Uh, Dave Hafner recently, and like in the last couple of years, I think you got to hear about the assessment for golf course. Sorry, well, but I was going to say, oh, okay, yeah, so it, it expires when the debt is paid off. That's my understanding. Where is that? It's about that's what that that's $40, what a year or half a year? What that's $90 a year. year. When does that go away? When the debt is paid off, which is... When is that? Well, don't... Yeah. Yeah. We took advantage of a lower interest rate, refinanced it, and short the rest of it. Okay. So we've all... Roughly. And we, I will say, it knows that we're keeping our payment the same, so we are constantly going away as a principal every month. Uh, you want to read it? Julie Mason, lot 2224. Yep. Um, with this assessment and the dues increase, do you see that? Um, us just breaking even on the bills that we have, or do you see it helping us to build um, our emergency fund back? Yep. I mean, what what do you so, expect to see? So the board and the community are they were trying to attack both. We're trying to build reserves back, and we're also trying to get ahead of expenses in the next year. So when you talk about bills and everything, and inflation, you got to understand the community has inflation too. We have expenses. Sorry, I used to that. I always thought that was the microphone. Hear me? So what you have to understand, though, is the community is not 
uh, resistant to inflation. I mean, we have inflation, we have gas, we have trucks, people, wages, healthcare. So it's not like we can keep dues flat and maintain the services everybody's used to. And the problem with it is you're not going to make anybody happy with these decisions because you're going to have a group of people that say, hey, look, I don't want my dues to go up. You're going to have a group of people that say, raise my dues, raise them more. So the problem with this decision is nobody's happy at the end of the day. No. No. Kevin Grossi, Lot 114. I don't think anybody is really saying we're opposed to this. We don't see the damn numbers. We want to see a full accounting of what's going on, where the money's going, and let's just get all the details. Is that too much to ask? I mean, you guys are just saying this is what you want us to do. You're voting on it, but we don't know shit where this money's going or where it went to start with that put us in this situation. So first of all, time out. Um, well, you got you to look to the board because the finance right. committee makes no spending decisions. All we do is advise the board. Yeah, the recommendation um, to the board. And, and the board makes decisions on spending. Part of the way this play to the government is, if you look back since 2010, we've probably had 10 different groups of decision makers. So really, you got to think about how we govern ourselves as a community if you really want to go down the hole. Sorry. I'd like to go down that hole. Can you hear me? Is this song? Yeah. Um, I think the real issue in, in reviewing the bylaws is that there's nothing that, that it ties dues both raising and lowering to anything in the economy. Um, so I've never been a part of a community that could hold dues flat forever. But no one likes assessments because you can't budget for assessments. Like this gentleman was saying, who has $300 extra laying around? Um, doesn't there need to be something in our bylaws that just raises and lowers the dues tied to something like CPI, like core inflation? If inflation is going up, our dues have to go up to kind of match that. If inflation goes down, then our dues should go down to match that. Um, and, and I agree. It should be tied to something. Because if you have a new board every year, that board's going to be resistant to raising dues because they want to be elected. This, the dues have to be tied independently uh, uh, to our bylaws, not to the board. Matt, you've seen a lot. Four, five, nine. Uh, gentleman in the oh, yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, Marlon. Yeah. I didn't know okay. And I swore I wasn't going to talk. I'm not. A, this is the first meeting I've been here to in four years. Will you get to my secret slide? So I don't mean it by secret, but we've got this graphed out. We have this graphed out, but I want you to just. I just want you to visually see something. <laughs> All right, so there's a lot of information. You see it on the graphs, but what I want to where to go? <laughs> what I want to point out is your dues increases. Since 2010, it's been increased three times, and that is it. If you go to your cost of living over that time frame, we're up to 5.8, and then the inflation rate. So, yes, you. We've spent about $1.7 million in some great stuff. I will tell you, I don't live here. I have no agenda. So, but you've got lots of really good stuff from your capital expenses. Can you go back to the graph with the colors? <laughs> I know it's not easy, I know. <clears throat> okay. So let's take this one right here, okay? We have our hugest expense. Beach and pool, bathroom floors, the beach building, the marina shelter, we had a row paving and patching, marina docks, pool, there were some miscellaneous expenses, the kayak launch, we had to buy two maintenance trucks. Then we have to like get them ready for salt and all that. So we had salt spreaders, we had a trailer, the pontoon for um, Lake Patrol needed repairs, pickleball, pickleball courts, and then we had a project at Crystal Lake. That's just one year. And that's not the day to day expenses. These are what came out of the savings account, all of these different things. And we could publish this, right, Rich? And I've got it going back even farther. Um, and I, 
I, I've been wanting to raise dues and I know it doesn't hurt. I will tell you this on the $300. We really thought about this. And I'm going to commend Brenda, who does your accounts receivables. She came up with the idea. You're going to get your July statement and there's no change. We're going to bill you in August for the $300 and you have three months to pay it. If you want to pay $100 a month, $50 every two weeks, we understand that as a group that it hurts just like it hurts everyone else. And then everything will be good for the holidays. And then you will get the increase in January. I have a, I have a question on the 2019, what you're talking about there. My name is Jennifer Donaldson, lot 2058 and 2059. So I was involved with some of the committees back then. And I remember specifically that the pickleball it was a big issue back then, but there was a, a group that was raising funds for the pickleball courts. So why do we have almost $10,000 or over $10,000 in expenses for a pickleball court that they were supposed to be raising the funds for? So I'm not educated on that. I came in late 2019. So I can't answer that. I'm educated. Go ahead. I'm done. I'm shaking. I need to get it. I was part of the committee that was raising funds for pickleball, and we raised three thousand dollars, and we handed that over to Bruce, and then he said he would take it from there, and you know, and put up the board and and all the expenses, because there was a big group here that really wanted pickleball. So, as a non-resident, the thing that I learned when I did all this data gathering is that um, a lot of great things happen and there are, people want to blame people how we got here. But you guys got some great stuff, right? I blame myself a little bit. You can blame previous boards. I feel like I didn't scream loud enough, soon enough. Um, you can blame Bruce Keller, spend a lot of money on his way out. You can blame Dave, you know, who we had to spend a lot of money over here. There's blame can go everywhere, but the fact is it is what it is. And we've got to get to where we're meeting the requirements of the bylaws. Road paving about two hundred thousand. The pool liner was one hundred and five. Willie's docks was between twenty twenty two and this year about twenty eight thousand was spent last year. Uh, security vehicle. The pontoon needed a mower. We had to get a pontoon trailer, a dump truck. All the accessories that go with it, that's 80, 83,000. Okay. And then technology. Huh? Which technology. Okay, so we have a large technology project happening, and that, and we need to spend money on it this year in order for fiber to work for the POA buildings. And it's not just, just that, okay? There's been a lot going on, and I, I'm in technology. I'm a technology director. Okay, and let me have this. I'm just going to take this one. So... You know, there's been so many things that's been going on through the multiple years here, but there's been no plan of updating things slowly every four or five years. OK, different computers, just simple. OK, and now that we're looking at the fiber, too, you got to get that kind of ready. Um, but what we've been doing is looking and we've actually been working on spreadsheets and doc, you know, documenting every piece of equipment we have. What needed to be replaced because they're antiquated. You know, if you don't have the proper equipment, we're wasting labor because these, you know, the late ladies and them, you know, and, and even the golf course, uh, willies, well, not well, some willies, but the pool, all of these people have equipment. And if it doesn't work, we can't get the data that we need to do the proper financing, too. The fiber optic thing paid for by REM, too. The fiber is the, is is one thing that they're running the line in, but we got to sit there and be able to be ready to hook up to it properly because we have cameras, right? And something happens somewhere right now because they're not hooked up locally to a central location. So if you think something happens there, they got to go out to that location, open up a sealed box, put a flash drive in, and see if they can and, and get the data out of it, right? And they go there how many times, and all of a sudden, it's not working. There's a problem. Those things need to be connected locally. They need to be seen all the time. 
Okay. And that's, that's something we've been working on too and trying to get that. So been working with uh, SEI from the beginning and they sat there. Normally those fiber lines from those different locations in the different buildings we have, that's usually a big cost. They're doing that for us for free. Okay. But we got to have the equipment to be able to manage it. Okay. So that there's security issues in this place. Like somebody got, you know, we had a murder how many years ago? Yeah. Okay, Tom. Okay. If we had cameras, we would see it seen properly that we would be able to manage and have access. They would be at. No, we have, but you'd be able to see the cars going in and out and have records of it. Okay. Yeah. That means a lot because, yeah. you know, I deal with that too uh, where I work. I mean, I'm doing a quarter million dollar project right now on just that. Um, you have license, you know, they got the flock that they've been talking about where you can actually license recognition, you know, but you got to need the security side. I mean, this stuff just doesn't happen by itself. All right. Uh, the gentleman in the back. Yeah, go back one slide. Go back one slide. Uh, I'll tell him we need him. We need his name and lot number. Oh, that marvelous. He, I think he did. Could you uh, repeat your name and lot number? Twenty-five. Don't back. Did you take the mic? I will. It's where, um, where Robert, you, you told us about the um, two months we have to have on hand and the accountability. Yes. So if we pay the assessment, is there going to be some accountability? Do we, do we have that two months on hand now? Yes. We the do. The treasurer in the future will be reporting on all three funds, not just one number. Okay. Because I think that's probably what everybody's right. worried about is, hey, we're at zero now. And, you know, if you if we have in the bylaws that we are, um, we're supposed to have two months on hand at all times, right? Mm -hmm. There's some accountability there, right? There's some responsibility for the uh, board. That's right. what we want to see. I think that's right. what everybody wants that's, to see. That's that. why I want those figures out every okay. board meeting. So that, that yes. will help. Okay. Also, some transparency on what you're spending will help, too. Would you agree? Everybody here agree? I, I would agree. Okay. Yeah. So that, that helps that helps everybody a little bit. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to beat you up at all, but you know what with the numbers that we see and everybody saying hey, we're broke. You have it in the bylaws saying you're supposed to take care of us. We just want to see you're doing it. I, I don't could you repeat that last sentence? I didn't understand. Yeah, in the bylaws, yeah. it says that you're supposed to take care of us and have enough money on hand. Right? That's correct. Yes. And that's all we want to see is that you're taking care of us yeah, and be transparent. Yeah, that's all. Yes. Um, can you publish that slide? Let's get that on the website. I think it was back in 2020. I know I'll say that there are people that here and then tell that head. If anybody's interested in our finances, call me. Send me an email. I will sit down with you. One on one. Now, if you get too overwhelming, I can get my job done. But now, I can more than easily sit down and discuss with anybody. I can take this and say that John is going to be. You really plan to sit down and keep getting the next step and be glad to do that with anybody. I do have one on one. Yeah, Scott, just 1883. Uh, I really just have questions and I want to make sure. That we're dealing in facts so that everybody understands the thoroughness that's taking place. It's not these five people to sit up here and deliver this. Um, but I, I want to make a couple comments. We have been saying, Jeff, that we want to put these numbers in front of the community every month. I've asked for it for two years and never got it. So what I would ask is if we say we're going to do that, because that's where the comfort zone comes from, let's get it done. Okay. Two years. Two years. Kyle, we talked about that plenty of times about needing detail. Here's my question. Obviously, I've been a part of these conversations for five years. The assessment is, is new. 
didn't know if you guys were going to go there or not, but it was talked about. And I talked about it with Kyle when we first started talking about it. The problem with the assessment in July, and I appreciate the thought around spreading it out, but we haven't done that before. So it's new and it's like major change. And you're giving people very little time to plan. When we first started talking about timing, we talked about a percent increase in July, which we were going to monitor every month and, and report on that so that when we got to July and made a determination on the number, it wouldn't be a surprise. Again, that reporting hasn't been there. And I think that's what people are asking for. Now I'm asking for it from a different seat. So timing is an issue on the assessment because it's a double whammy and people need to plan. I would ask the question, and I've got two other questions, but I want to dump all at once. Was there consideration to taking the assessment in January and reverse the move? I'm not going to debate the, the amounts and do you do both, but was that discussed? Because there's one, two board members that were a part of many of those conversations and Kyle for multiple years. So it's not, it's not a new concept. How did we get to the assessment in July? We basically had a meeting with the finance to really go in depth. Jeff, you need oh, to. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just for the. It's you don't hear it, but it's good for it's good for uh, the Zoom people. Okay, that's what it's for. Yes, um, and you know, this one works too. I don't know. Don't worry about it. So basically. It came out, everybody on the finance committee and everybody on the board, except Grant, um, he, he was out of town, but uh, was 100% for it. I mean, that's, we discussed it in length. And this is, you know, uh, you, you, it's very hard not to sit there and see when 100%. And you got some people, a lot of people on that finance committee that are very conservative. And, and they're the ones back in, when was it, uh, Scott? I mean, when I sent an email out that uh, they they basically said ten percent for January originally, and so it's been a long time. But this is conservative. They're more conservative than me, and I'm conservative. Okay, okay so two two so, other questions because so, I think you're going to sell it, but that's okay. I know what it's like to stand up there. <laughs> but here's the two pieces that are missing that we had lengthy conversations about. Two people plus the brilliant. And that was understand, first of all, do we know what the capital fund needs to be to take care of this community? Does anybody have that number yet? Are you talking about what does it take over a five-year period on an annual basis to continue to make improvements? Not standard maintenance, yes. but building redos, yes. something breaks, the unexpected. What is that? Do we know that number? And that's there. You're looking at the escrow. You're looking at this combination, okay? But you're looking at the escrow. If I write by knowing the number that is in the escrow and you do that by many years, okay? Because I was actually the one that kind of worked with this. I'm not a genius on, on accounting, okay? I went with other people and talked about different ideas years ago, okay? And that's how this escrow got developed back in like 2009. But that escrow, you got to have the cash for it and we got to be able to show that. And that's what I'm going been fighting for. That's not we the question. We got to show that. Jeff, that's not the question. My question is, and I think it's we have it or we don't. I think I know the answer because we've asked for it. Do we know the number? Let's just take five years, take three years, whatever. What capital fund do we need to be building an ESCO for to meet our needs based on increasing costs? Do we know that number? That's a yes or no. Scott, can you please tell us? What kind of road deterioration are we going to have over the next five years? No, but what I can tell you, Bob, is that... In a, can you tell us what vehicles are going to fail over okay. the next five years? Can I answer your question? Sure. Okay. So if, if you use roads, that's an easy one because everybody understands it. I reported at the annual meeting, it's $120,000 to $130,000 per mile, right? Yep. 4.2 miles of Alpine. So anybody that went to the annual meeting... Listen to the recording. That's what was said. Yep. That's 600 grand. So if you take $300, right, in an assessment, you could argue, well, now I've got 4.2 miles of Alpine. We can pick. No, no, let no, me no, finish, no. please. No, no, no. That's no. not the fact. Let me, let, me, let me finish. What? This grant 
I'm not ranting. I'm not ranting. What I'm trying to get people to understand is there's conversations that have been had, and I'm asking the question, did those get considered? And it's not ranting, but here's the, here's the example. Because Would you like to take the mic? Oh, I want you to stop ranting. Okay. No. No, no. I've got the floor, unless you, you don't have the floor, right? So, Bob, my, my example was, we know that's a big number. Do we know how often it's going to be redone? My question is, from a resident standpoint, turning the chair, when you take a 300 assessment and 600K, I think what folks are asking for, what does that do? Number one, that one's been asked this, multiple times. Replace, I'm answering your question, sure, sir. Sure. Number one, that replaces our emergency fund. You know, if if That's something happened to our dam, and even the dam at Crystal Lake, you guys have any idea how much money was put into that dam over the last 10 years? Probably not, but it was a lot. If anything were to happen to this dam out here, the 400,000, you know, which is roughly two months of emergency funds, it would go in a heartbeat. Um, and, and that's the reason that we really need to do this one-time thing uh, so that we can get that emergency fund back in place. So if that happens, it sounds like those do it again. I'm sorry? You said if that happens, it sounds like those do it again. We own, you are part owners of the largest privately owned dam in Indiana. You own part of that. And part of the Part of the, the fact that we get to enjoy having that dam in this lake is the responsibility comes with that. That out there for the school maintenance cost for the last four years. We have that data. I guess it sounds like it was Mr. Gissel was trying to extrapolate because you got the dam, you got the trucks, you got the roads, put that all together. But what does that look like? And that normally something. That's being worked on, uh, but we're also trying to we're also trying to find ways to reduce our costs going forward. What would happen if if everybody in the community agreed that our main roads would be public? You know, would you guys agree with that? Yeah. Well, 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 wait a second before you answer. Think about this: our roads are public today. We have people that live on Georgetown that cut through our community every day. The public comes to Willie's. The public goes to the golf course. So I'm not saying I'm not saying all of our roads, but if our but what if our main road, what if the main roads the county agreed to uh, to take care of the pavement? I mean that's a huge amount of money that comes off. So the only way you can save money is to give up something, you know? And and that's always a question. Are you willing to give up something? What is it you're willing to give up in order to keep the community going? So, Bob, my last question is, is tied to that. And in the same conversation that I'm referring to, like, what is the amount that we need? We also talked about to get the feedback from the community because the board, no matter who it is, and finance no matter who it is they have a perspective right but it's a small group of people so we had talked about and suggested and there was a lot of head nodding this four weeks ago let's do a survey to understand for the big items that we need to fund long term what are the priorities one person might say four miles of alpine makes no sense they want it somewhere else but we don't know the answer to that so you're taking dollars that that are serving a purpose but we don't know what they're for so I would just ask you guys to consider with the support of Ken and Jeff and Kyle that we're a part of these meetings, nodding head, do a little bit more groundwork so folks can have an understanding what kind of progress are we making or not. Like how this move, how much does it quote fix or not? Actually, okay. uh, actually what yeah. you're suggesting really ties in with some suggestions that Grant has made. Also, is we uh, want one to way that we can to get the communications out. Uh, Grant came up with uh, with an idea for actually made a template for uh, one way that we can helpfully better communicate things to the community. 
uh, you know, uh, what Marla said, if you have a question to be able to find it, actually made a tough You know, we can't have everybody uh, in the way that we can only help spending an hour and communicate things to the community. <laughs> but, you know, if you have you know, questions, like Marla said, we need to know what those questions are so, so we can try to, you know, we can't have everybody in this room. Hi, Bob. It's Jennifer Donaldson again with 2058, 2059. So you asked about what we, we would be willing to give up for um, the privilege of living here, right? So I, I have to go back to the traffic situation and I, I have called and complained and complained and complained. I sit in my office and I watch all day long people going 50, 60 mile an hour, all these contractors that are coming in here, blowing the stop sign at Alpine and Bromhamhurst, 50 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour with trailers and stuff. If that's what it, you're talking about with having more public access to these roads, I don't want any part of it. Someone's going to get killed. They're going to run over a child. Who do I complain to? Me. Okay. So. All of our guys, but one, work for me in West Harrison. Um, I got three of them that are paid employees by West Harrison Police Department, and they have full police powers. They've been through the, the, the police academy. Um, with that, we have started doing uh, citations. We have been started. We've bumped up that now because I live in here also. I live in, I live on Bramahurst. Yeah, and my neighbor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's a hard thing because I have. It's either I have one person on, or I might have two. It's hard to be everywhere at one time. I, I totally get that. And he, he was a yeah, police officer. Yeah, he does well. works, but so, uh, well, we work it now. So I st we, we got this agreement with my agency that we can start doing citations and take. It's just we're, we're easing into it because I don't want to upset, you know, the sheriff's department. I want to be able to work with them so they can work with us. And, you know, I don't want to build any enemies as we go. Well, believe me, I don't want to police state. I, you know, the, the talk about having licensed readers and everything like that. I certainly hope you guys let the public vote on that before you do something like that. You know, this is a private lake. This is a private community. I have privacy. I have rights. You know, if you don't want to have a gated community, then we have rights. But, but this whole thing that's going on right now is throwing the, I don't care if it's three hundred, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000. I don't care if it's $50. The fact that it's being thrown at us with no notice, you guys are having meetings. I know how it all works, right? And I know it's hard to be up there and taking the brunt of it. But if the communication does not get better in this community, at this point right now, I don't even want to live here anymore. What am I getting for my dues? We have a golf course that if anyone's working, you cannot get any tee times because of all the leagues that are coming in there, okay? So we're paying, we're paying dues for a golf course that you can barely use unless you're home during the day. Okay. So that's that. You have the mowing not being done. I understand they're having problems. It's just one thing after another, after another. Um, but I want to get back to the, the point and I'll, I'll turn this over. Um, the operating money right now is gone. Where, where did this emergency money go? What emergency took the money out? Basically, if you look at all the different, you look at all the different uh, projects that's been done, maintaining, maintaining. I know what I'm trying to say. Too many times because too many people are just looking at that big dollar figure through the years because they never had an issue. I was here for 13 years before I had to leave for a family thing we never had an increase so people get easy people get let you know you sit there and you're used to that okay and you 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 know we did have some good cash but guess what cost of living everything kept going up now inflation hit it big time you know so so let me see if i can help with that a little bit so besides the the long list of things that Marla went through. And by the way, thanks, Marla. She's awesome, by the way. Our operating budget on an annual basis is $2.4 million. Does anybody, does anybody understand that? Um, $2.4 million? So, staff, employees maintain the lake, not pave the roads, because that's considered capital. It costs $2.4 million just to run the community on a daily, daily basis the way we experience it. 
if you want a different experience, then you have to cut expenses. And if you want a different experience, you have to spend more. And again, you have a community that all have different opinions. Again, like I said earlier, no one's going to leave and be happy with this conversation. There's a lot of people that don't want it. There's a lot of people who want more. There's a lot of people who want to stay the same. Um, if you take a 10% inflation number on $2.4 million, it's $240,000. And it sounds like a really big number, but you can see 10% inflation pretty easily, especially what we just experienced in the economy. So I've been on the finance committee for about 10 years, and I've been the chairperson for three or four. And we've had a lot of conversations about this over the years. We've debated it. We've debated dues increase. We've debated a lot of conversation about an automatic increase. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to raise dues. And then when you, when you need to raise dues, nobody wants to do it on top of that. But nobody wants to go without anything. And then there's a group who wants more. So if you guys can figure out that combination of the whole answer, mm -hmm. I'm, all, I'm all ears. I'm just going to do this without a microphone because it's not working. It works for Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Mark, I have to cheat. Mark Smith, 2893 is my lot number. It's been nine years. I still don't memorize that. I don't think anybody here, I'm not speaking for everybody, but we're not here to complain about, oh, you're taking our $300. What we're here to complain about is no transparency. We, we, everybody has asked the same question and it has been danced around the entire time. Where did the emergency funds go? We understand there's operational costs. That's not an emergency and we're not blaming you guys, but it's somewhere down the line. We need assurances. Okay, we're getting $300 assessment. What's our assurance? We're an association. You guys are the board, but you're there to represent the association. Where, what is our assurance that that three hundred dollars is go, that we're not going to be here six months or, or a year from now? That's what we want to know. What is our assurance moving forward? Every month, every every month, every month. Yeah, we're going to say, oh, I get Mike, but I've got a voice. Uh, Patricia Hawkins. Lots number six, seven, nine, and six, eight, and it's so nice being on this side of the page. Uh, to the lady who asked where the money went, I headed the board at the time we made a decision that has depleted our emergency funds. And I did my mea culpa at a meeting a couple months ago, but it was not as well attended as this. So let me just explain. The Trump years, whether you liked him or not, we had a booming economy and it was extremely difficult to get people in here to do work because they were going after the bigger jobs. So what we made a decision to do, the then board and Mr. Starks and Donna Yetzer were on that board. We decided that we would accelerate the spending for dredging and roads. In other words, we would take money from the next year your emergency funds. We would move it into this year, to this year's operating budget, so we could entice someone to come in here and do that work. Never in anybody's wildest imagination would we have, within a year or two of that, the inflation that we have. So money that was going to go in to replenish our emergency fund, because remember, every month, Ideally, money is going into that fund, it's going into escrow. The plan was, since we would not be spending money for dredging or for roads that year, that money would be put into the emergency fund. But guess what? It didn't happen because inflation came. There was no nefariousness. There was no cheating. It was, in retrospect, something that I wish I had a do-over for. That if I had known that within a year, we would have inflation that we haven't seen in 40 years, I would have sat on that cash. But we did not know then what we know now. So that is why our emergency fund is to please. So do you not have an emergency fund until October? Well, I'm assuming right. by what finance is recommending that this money is earmarked for emergencies. It goes there. It's not going to be put in escrow to be spent on something bright and shiny and new. Nope. It's not going to be going into the operating budget. It's going to replenish emergency funds. And what's the kind of emergency? Okay, think think about this in your household, okay? You've got your operating, you've got your checking account. You've maybe have 
a savings plan for your kids to go to college. You put money in. You have a travel fund. You Maybe you're saving to redo your yard. You put money in that. Your emergency fund is, oh, my God, an asteroid falls on my house, and I'm going to have to pay I'm my debt. But so in the yes. United, here in Pin Valley, what is considered a emergency? Well, I mean, I need to know. You have a tornado. Okay. If you have a tornado, you are still going to have insurance deductibles. No, by the way, with most insurance companies, you're fighting for a year or more to get your money back. But in the meantime, they have to make sure that there's a roof on this building. So that money would be paid out of our pockets, our emergency fund, to be replenished at a future date when we settle with the insurance company. That's why we need an emergency fund. I, I did. I mean, I want to do it. I just was trying to figure out what. Yeah, that's that's. Right. And then also, what's the process when you make a decision like we do that you're going to take the money from this to the road and then move it forward? I mean, is there what's the what's the protocol? Is there a in the bylaws? There, there's nothing the bylaws to stop that. We work yeah, that well. Right? We what we work that in yeah. conjunction with finance. We work that with our community manager. And you know, again, I am sure that anybody on the board at that time mm -hmm. would like the opportunity mm -hmm. to sat on that cash, but we could. And something else too to remember: inflation that we have is an aggregate. There are certain parts of the economy where the inflation is actually much higher than the supposed basket the government puts together and waits to calculate inflation. If you look at some of the things where we spend money, pay the, that far exceeds the cost or the inflation rate. And there's nothing we can do about that. We have to go out and buy in that market and pay whatever the market rate is to get people in here and the work we need. Yeah, while you're rolling, can you address the dock issue that we talked about for multiple years? Oh, the floating, the floating, the floating, the floating dock. Hello, I'm <laughs> <laughs> talker. Um, the floating docks. Those were put in several years ago at the recommendation of the Lakes Committee. And I believe that it had finances blessing that we were moving away from the fixed stocks because those fixed stocks were damaging boats. As you've got the up and down of the water, the boats are banging. People weren't happy that their boats were being damaged. We get that. So the floating docks were supposed to be the answer to those problems. And they would have a longer life than these docks. They would look nicer. And within 48 hours of their being open to the public, Bruce Keller and I were calling on people who had already fallen off the docks uh, because they are a very different sensation. Uh, so we had to go back and spend tens of thousands of dollars to shore them up. I mean, in addition to educating people about how they would feel different um, and you needed to calibrate yourself to that, we also put money into making them more stable. And so that is a project that far exceeded what we had ever budgeted and escrowed for it. So that would have been a part of depleting money in, in escrow. So I will turn this over to whomever. Done. Sorry, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Mason Lot 2224. Um, all the things that Pat is talking about, I just think since we've got a pretty big crowd here, I've been coming to meetings for a pretty long time. Everything she's talking about is mentioned at these meetings. All of that spending, money being spent this year that was taken from the, the year forward. If you have concerns about those things and you're really worried about this stuff, it's important to come to these meetings to look at the agenda. It doesn't always tell you what's gonna be discussed. And there are lots of things here discussed that, I mean, every time I come, I hear something different that, than what I expected to be being talked about. And if you really are concerned about how stuff's happening in this community, you really need to come. I, I don't know how to say that anymore. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Yes, well said. Okay, so we have a motion on the table. It's been seconded. We've had a lot of discussion. And now it comes down to where the rubber meets the road. So uh, all, in all in favor? Aye. 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 So it's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Virginia. Okay. Future planning. Okay, I'm pretty loud as well. <laughs> I just have one question. We see these pretty slides up here, but I don't know about you, but I can't read the small stuff. So is it at all possible? I, I worked in, I did presentations for employee benefits for God knows how long. And we always had the slide presentation in paper so people in the back could see what was going on and make notes. Could we please have that when there is a slide presentation going on? I, that's I all I'm asking for. Yeah. We can do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, right. I'm going to give it a shot. If I fit it directly, that's now going to be easy. How many? If I fit it directly. From the office standpoint, that's a lot of money. Think about this room. If everyone has to have a PowerPoint available to them, that's what, four sheets maybe? Uh, something like that. So it's it's possible to do, but we we try to keep those kinds of expenses down. And the other part of this is how many times do we print off copies? We usually do 25. We did 50 today. Uh, we print off copies and they're not even looked at. Then can uh, we so, then can we can we yeah, add we this? Definitely email it out. Absolutely. Do it with the when you publish the, the agenda, include it. Yeah. I see. And yeah, I see. Rich, the reason that these microphones are important is it'll be shown on Zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, we try to reach out in that way too. But yeah, that's that's the reason we don't actually do printouts at these meetings. So but uh, Richard, Richard is shaking his head. He agrees to that. He can do that. These were kind of why we have all that information. We are going to have it on the website and we are going to serve it. We're going to make sure everybody gets mm -hmm. copies. We can we can send out a PowerPoint program with all of this on it, so we start, we'll do it. Perfect. And, uh, over the slide, I'm quite okay. I appreciate it. Oh, I didn't use my mic. Uh, <laughs> you know, hey, hey, hold on, Bob. Thank you very much for bringing that up. We appreciate yeah. it. I want to also say thanks to Rich. Rich really works on this drastic. Okay. He is putting a lot of time. Okay. Uh, moving on, we have future planning. Uh, George Lortz. Michael, I hear you, Rich. All of them. <laughs> okay, well, you'll be happy to know I'm not going to talk about spending money. Um, Future Planning has five initiatives this year. Um, one of them is um, to continue our work on improving communications. We were just talking about a piece of that a minute ago, uh, improving all of our presentation locations, our equipment and the way we do things. Uh, Echo's enhancements are gonna continue. We have some major decisions to make about Echo's uh, coming up. And then later on in the year, the other part of communications is going to be another look at the website and see if we can possibly make that more user-friendly. So that's the first initiative. The second initiative, we are going to continue uh, refreshing uh, areas of Hidden Valley. We did the front entrance, a lot of the front entrance last year. We're gonna continue that. Uh, we're gonna start looking at the golf club and the pool and the marina and the beach and other areas. Uh, probably not spend a lot of money this year, but at least get ourselves in a position to uh, add information to next year's budget. And then finally, uh, the office has in place uh, something they call an asset management system. 
in which they're looking at uh, budgeting for all aspects of uh, Hidden Valley, not just uh, how how good we look. And we're going to be interfacing all our work with uh, with that uh, new uh, 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 that new system that they have. Uh, the, the the next uh, initiative is we are continuing work on the documentation. Uh, we already have some plans for improving and enhancing the CMP in a couple of areas, and uh, we've made a proposal to the board on how we can do that. The land use plan, uh, we've already start, uh, got some changes made. We'll be introducing those to the uh, during the, the year. And then as far as the bylaws are concerned, uh, we're working on uh, with other committees with regard to uh, their requests for bylaws uh, or new bylaws or changes, but we also have offered our, our help to, uh, to Pat uh, Hawkins and the board for any initiatives they're, they're conducting on, on rewriting bylaws. Uh, our fourth initiative is that um, we are going to be again assisting with town hall meetings. We already have two of them planned and uh, a town hall meeting basically is more of an informal gathering. Uh, we get people together, have a presenter, uh, a topic, and then have a big Q&A question and answer. We had two town hall meetings last year, and we suspect we're going to be more this year. And then the final initiative, and this is brand new, uh, prior to uh, COVID, we were uh, committed to conduct a, uh, the, one of the semi-annual meetings of an organization called the Ohio Lakes uh, Community Association. Now, I have been in an Ohio Lakes Commission or Association, I don't know, but we are. These are all a bunch of uh, communities around the Midwest area who all have a, a lake as a basis for their community. And these, uh, these folks get together uh, twice a year uh, at somebody's site uh, and talk about all the plans and problems and progress they're making on their, on their particular lakes community. So it's a big information sharing opportunity for all these communities. Uh, we are on tap for the fall uh, ALCA meeting and we're gonna be asking everybody to help. We wanna make Hidden Valley look as nice as possible. Uh, we do have events planned, uh, boat rides and, uh, and uh, many uh, business meetings. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, some of you in the, in the room here have been to all the meetings and it's a wonderful exchange of information, all with communities exactly like us. So that's new. I didn't have that available at the uh, annual meeting. Don't think there's going to be a lot of money spent. Uh, maybe we'll do some uh, fresh up, additional fresh up of the community uh, getting ready for this fall meeting. But other than that, those are the five initiatives for um, future planning. Anybody have any questions? Yes. Um, Claudia Rickard, certainly does great. Um, would you go back to the slides? Thanks. It had on there their dog park completion and Georgetown Road purchase. Yes, the land use plan, just to give everybody up, uh, an update, is, is a document that we put together about four years ago. Uh, it, it describes all of the property within Hidden Valley and all of the surrounding property. Who owns it? What's it being used for? Uh, what could it be used for? Uh, and we have we have we put that together so that in planning additional assets like the dog park, for example, uh, we needed to know what was what was here, what was in this uh, triangle called State Line Road, uh, Georgetown Road, and can't remember the one down at the bottom of the hill. Anyway, uh, and and that triangle has been defined in great detail. We know who owns all the property. Uh, we, we have an idea what they're going to use for. And if, if, if possible, uh, if money permits, uh, there might be opportunities also to purchase some of this property. So the land use plan is, is, is a planning document basically describing everything in Hidden Valley Lake area. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. 
Any other questions about the uh, future plan? Okay, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, we we may not, but interestingly enough, over the last maybe five or ten years, we bought at least three uh, pieces of property surrounding Hidden Valley. The we heard about it being up for sale. It was adjacent to Hidden Valley, and we bought it for various reasons. Uh, there are two pieces of property along uh, State Line Road. We bought them. A significant piece of property along the West Jordan. Come on, boy. Sorry, Rich. Uh, we bought a, a piece of property along Georgetown Road, uh, and that doesn't even go back farther than that uh, when we bought the, the, uh, hit the 77 acres and stuff. We do want that problem. Well, there are, are plans to, to develop uh, the Georgetown area. We, we've used it for two reasons. One, uh, we cleaned up one area at the top of the hill there, uh, top of the Georgetown Hill, and we've used that primarily as, as a maintenance area. Uh, and then the area which is closest to that um, uh, clinic down at the bottom of the hill, uh, we have we had uh, plans to put some uh, uh, environmental type uh, and, and recreational type trails and stuff in there. We bought them basically as a buffer buffer area, but also had some ideas at that time, what we were going to do at this point, money isn't there. So there are no immediate plans, but we did uh, buy those uh, pieces within the last uh, five years. Yeah. But you do understand the reason for his question. We're talking about needing to raise money and right. you're talking about land, but you're never saying that that might be on the table to sell if we happen to need uh, it. I know it's not for committed. Basically, uh, the, the, the land was purchased. Thanks for the question. The land was purchased uh, with some some idea in mind, purchased primarily because it was a, it looked like a good investment at the time. We have shut down developing of them because of the money, money problem. But we own them. And so that's one of the reasons for land use plan, but it's not the only reason. Okay. Okay. Questions? Thank you, George. Yep. Uh, Lakes Committee, Eric Fox. Hey, uh, I'm Eric Fox. I'm the uh, chairman of the Lakes Committee. Um, light agenda today. We've got uh, just second. Uh, so our first rule, need my cheaters. Uh, so the first rule was uh, our current bylaw, 7712, is prohibited watercraft. Uh, airboats, jet skis, powered water skis, ATVs, powered personal watercraft, otherwise known as PWCs, are prohibited for use on HVL POA lakes and will not be issued registration stickers. Our change, I don't know if the language is there for the change, Rich, is it close? Yeah, sorry, there you go. So the change is permitted and non-powered watercraft. Um, ski, wake boat, center console boat, runabout, bow rider boat, cutting cabin boat, deck boat, fishing boat, pontoon boat, sailboat, john boat, dinghy, kayak, canoe, paddleboard, paddle boat, paddle bike, and sea scooter permitted with registration. Prohibited watercraft examples, uh, but not all inclusive are airboats, jet boats, houseboats, jet skis, powered water skis, jet propelled kayaks, hydrofoils, kite boards, catamarans, ATVs, cars, boats, and powered personal watercraft and not be issued registration stickers. And then part A, uh, watercraft not mentioned. Uh, uh, the idea here was um, periodically as things evolve over time, and, and they do evolve over time, uh, different watercraft show up and, and we get the question inevitably, is this allowed on the lake? So one of the things we took undertook was the idea of saying, okay, let's define what is allowed here. Instead of saying what isn't allowed, these are the items that we currently allow. That way we don't end up with things on the lake that get here before we have the opportunity to make a rule about whether or not they should be here. Um, Double-decker pontoon boats, triple-decker pontoon boats. There's all kinds of things that are coming along. Powered surfboards. Um, so there's all kinds of watercraft that are coming out that were probably just a heartbeat from somebody saying, well, I, I've got a sticker for this. So that's the purpose for this rule. Uh, was really kind of expressly to give the Lakes Committee and the board an opportunity to preview 
what is coming and make a decision about whether or not that's best for Hidden Valley Lake. Okay, so this is the second reading of the rule. Is that correct? Yes. Um, do I'll we first have it. Yeah. Do we have a second for the motion? Grant seconds. Uh, any additional discussion? Uh, gentleman in the blue shirt here. Eric Raymond, 1796. Um, it, it says here catamaran is not allowed. I have a catamaran sailboat, and you say a sailboat is allowed, but not a catamaran. So what's, what's the answer there? Uh, that really should be catamaran as a powerboat. There are catamaran sailboats, and there are catamaran powerboats. Right. So if a catamaran powerboat is 20 feet or less, it would count like a deck boat. Uh, a catamaran sailboat would follow the sailboat. And that's not very clear here. Okay. Can we can we make a clarification? Can 100%. we? We should probably put power catamaran. In there. Okay. Power catamaran over twenty feet. So a power yeah, the intent was never to outlaw the catamaran sailboat. So the catamaran is just the sailboat. That's your okay. As long as it fits the sailboat length rules. Of the 26 I think it's 25 feet, 26, 26 feet. Okay, so you could have a 26 foot catamaran sailboat and be allowed to go boating. Right. Now, it also, to be clear, all boats on the lake have to meet that rule that they have to be trailerable on yes. state roads without special permits. So okay. let's not confuse the idea that you could have a, I'll say, a 26 foot lagoon catamaran that's also 15 feet wide. It yeah, is not collapsable. Just to be clear. If it's not a sailboat, we could look at it as a pontoon boat. Or it's a catamaran that it had a motor on. It is not a pontoon boat. Pontoon boats are defined as having a separate deck and pontoon. <laughs> I also noticed I've had a windsurfer that I've enjoyed out here and had it in the past, and I plan to get another one. It does say sailboat. I would assume my windsurfer would fall under the sailboat category. Is that correct? I think that's reasonable. Okay. I guess my last thought is there are a lot of new cool things. You know, there are a lot of new cool toys coming out. And I think we all enjoy and play with them. If it hasn't been a problem, why are we just saying we can't do anything? Has, I don't, has anybody been heard? Has there been a problem? It feels like we're making a rule to make a rule. And maybe there's a really cool toy coming out next week that we might want. And then you have to go back and I, I guess we would bring that to the Lakes Committee. And I had planned, yeah. I, I yes. know this was brought up last time, and I had planned to come to the Lakes Committee. But since the first reading and now the second reading, I don't think there's been a Lakes Committee for me to attend. No, there's not. So I was a little... I, I yeah, so I mean, the idea, again, is to give the opportunity for the Lakes Committee and the board to have a preview of the cool new toys, as you mentioned. Yeah. Not coming available again. One of the things that I've seen is yeah. powered surfboards. Yeah, so very cool. Is it a good thing for Hidden Valley? I can't answer that for you today, but we don't allow jet skis, right? So I'm not sure we would go that far with that. So I'll give you a, I'll give you another concrete example. The new Sea Dew uh, boat that's out is uh, it's not a pontoon. It has multiple hulls on it. That's one of the things that has come up. Does that count as a pontoon boat because they call it a pontoon, or does it count as a deck boat? We are of the opinion that it counts as a deck boat because it is not separate pontoons. It is all a it's a multi hull boat. So it sounds like the lakes committee would be open to if something was great to say, "Hey, here's my new toy. Here's what I want to do," and we'd be pretty open minded to it. 100%. I, I kind of don't like a rule that just says across the board nothing else is going to And and if I understand you said also, mm -hmm. my windsurfer would when I get my next one would still be allowed. It's no problem. It's because to me I treat it like a small sailboat. Right? It's like a sailboat. Okay, we're on the same page. But I don't know. Same question relative to hydrofoil. The hydrofoil. I presume that means a powered. Hydrofoil? Yeah. Okay. Good question. That might need clarification. Uh, 
Eric, to answer your question, those surfboards are also coming in hydrofoil versions. Yeah. Or the, uh, the jet motor at the bottom of the hydrofoil. Yeah. Which is motorized. That, right. that implies motorized. Again, motorized. I, I'm thinking I've got an air chair that's an airfoil. Not the same thing. In our view. So, so I think power should be added to that yeah, as well. To, to make that distinguishing thing, we're talking about watercraft. Your, your hydrofoil is not a watercraft without having a boat to pull it. That's kind of a simple question because the higher mm -hmm. And I, I would tell you if you add the word power in front of this, yeah. it's kind of like this. Some people can point like a you know, wood circle would be. Yeah. Well, but I, I would be amenable to that amendment. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that makes sense. If it's not power or it's only major power, then we're okay. Yeah. So the quick comments, Doug Gabbard, Lot 218. It's just also part of what we was dealing with when I was on the board previously. I and mean, it's still a very heated discussion is are, are we allowed to have the wake surface behind? And that was a big thing that that's a new toy, relatively new, that causes big wake. You you can ask the questions in the community, and it is it's like talking about abortion or religion. Right. You, we, that, want them, we don't want the that wasn't so, really so where they're going with this. So that's where this is gonna prevent the next toy that has something like that to show up on our leg that causes damage or disrupts the lake's usability because this new toy shows up. So what they're going with is, here's a list of what we're allowed to. Oh, you got a new toy? Show it to us. What does it do? Let us see what it can do to the lake and we'll decide. Yeah, thanks for, I, I don't think that's a, a parallel no. consideration, but thank you. For the okay. yeah. would, would it be acceptable since we talked about it to add wing surfer in there as an allowable What? Yeah. Okay. Eric? Yes. Some of the microphone. George Lawrence, Lot 1882. One thing that might help, I think I wrote this one. Uh, one thing that might help is to use the clause uh, permitted but not limited to, or prohibited but not limited to. If you put that clause in there, it gives you some it's there. wiggle room to. It's there. It is there. Yeah, that's, uh, that's part A. Watercraft not mentioned as permitted or also prohibited. I take it back. That's okay. It's a small subsection, George. Yeah. Say, so, Eric, once again, what was what was the boat? Or, okay. Let's so just, just to, to recap that. We're going to say power uh, power catamaran over twenty feet, and let's see hydrofoil, hydrofoil, power hydrofoil, and that's in the prohibited watercraft section. Yeah. So is that is okay. that going to be allowed the power hydrofoil? No, oh, okay. that's in the prohibited. That's in the prohibited. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Powered hydrofoil. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then we're gonna add when. Uh, oh, wind surfer. I, I'm still considering that a sailboat. Okay. Do you, do you have a sticker for it today? No, no, no. I told one of them. Oh, you want to get one again? I see. Yeah. All right. I, I had one, but I wanted to. It's always that add-on. <laughs> Should we add? Uh, what What is the board's okay. preference on that? Should we add? I think they're allowed. Well, because they they refer to it as a uh, a wind surfer. They refer to it as a kite surfer. They refer to it as different things. So they're all under the. As long as it's powered by a sail, you're okay. And you might consider it a sailboat. I mean, I, I got a couple of lakes made. John, what do you think? Yes. Dave, what do you think? A uh, uh, wind surfer. Wind surfer. Wind sail. Yes. wind. So they call it the boat. Yeah. But does it does it need to say, or could it say, like like all wind powered vessels, as long as they don't have a motor? I probably wouldn't go there. Yeah. Okay. Again, I I, I want to capture wind vessels under sailboats. Okay. Because sailboat's a pretty specific thing. You got a sail, it's propelled by the wind, and it uh -huh. can't go over 26 feet. Okay. Uh, very good. And I so I think I think I would defer not to put that there because I'm I'm pretty sure your wind server is not 26 feet long. Yeah, and I'm totally comfortable as long as it's you're as long as you're allowing toys that are yep. powered by the wind. Yep. I'm okay. Or not so, excluding that. Eric uh, Tom powered <laughs> Okay, right. so I'm up front here. Uh, just a quick comment. It, it, it sounds to me with all the discussion around this issue and the changes that you're making, you might want to take a step back and rewrite this before you give the cha board a chance to vote on this. I'd like to see all these changes in front of me instead of just discussed. 
It's really just. I mean, you made a number of them. Here. There's only two. And we're yeah, just putting power in front of a couple you're of them. Just power in front of it. And there's two. Well, again, I, I'd like to I see like it in front it. of us before the board votes. I, I agree. I'm not, I'm not. I think we should go back to the first reading. I agree. I'd request that we do a second reading with those amendments made in right. reading. Yeah, you don't do a first one. You would make the change and then redo yeah, the second. Line. I mean, we can do that. To redo the second. I mean, I can also just walk away from it. We can leave it the way as it is. No. Nope. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, we're trying to help the community here. Right. right. The ultimate, the ultimate goal. Okay, but we can there, still consider this the first reading, and and you would update it for the uh, for the next month. This or the is next the reading. second reading. Though. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but if we if there's going to be changes, that would make it a first reading again. No, again, no. no. Oh, that's the whole rationale for one reading, yeah. two readings. Okay, first reading, get out. Second reading, reading, get back in there are changes. Then you can make another second reading. Yeah. Okay, that's why we went through that. two readings. Very good. Okay, very good. Thank you. So, are we tabling this or voting? Uh, we're tabling it. Well, they make the changes for a second reading. Okay. I'll take what. Okay. Jeff? This next one will be fun then. <laughs> uh, so the current rule is uh, 7 which is flotation devices. Um, max diameter allowed is 20 feet and no more than 26 feet in any direction. The entire device must fit into a square footprint that is no more than 20 feet long and 20 feet wide, i.e. 400 square feet. I'll give you a little history on this rule. This rule is actually 15 or 16 years old. It was put in place to deal with the water trampolines that were coming out at the time. Water trampolines, I might add, at, at that 20-foot width are almost $6,000. So anybody want to hazard a guess to how many we have on the lake? It's about four. So, but like I said, similar to our water craft rules, there are other things coming along, and we felt the need to say what is inclusive, what is exclusive. So what you get is the bylaw that gives you exactly the same sort of measurements for what is tolerated. Max diameter is 20 feet, no more than 26 feet in any direction. That's part A. Tire device may fit in the uh, 20 by 20 feet uh, width, and it gives you the 400 foot square foot max size. Uh, but generally it says the uh, permitted flotation devices are water mats, water slides, water trampolines, climbing walls, loungers, large raft, standard PFDs or tubes. Prohibited flotation devices, there's a pretty specific list here, flying tubes, believe it or not, that's a thing, uh, and any flotation device not specifically named as permitted. Again, we're trying to stay ahead of things that people are just going to plop in the water, and we've got no power to currently say yes or no to those things. Is this a first or second reading? This second, is reading. second reading. Second reading. Okay. Um, do we have a... Do we have first, a yeah, first. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Any discussion? Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's Phil, a couple. Phil, uh, you were first. Yes, uh, Phil, Phil Heights, lot 2730. Um, there's a couple things about this that uh, concern me. One is being on the architecture committee. We have rules that uh, docks and boats and so on have to be within a certain distance from the shoreline, right? And if you have something that's 20 feet by 20, uh, six feet there, or as, uh, as much as 26 feet, and it can be a hard device, as is, as it says here in this parentheses. Somebody's going to have to park that out there, and it's going to go beyond. I'm sorry, Phil, where does it say it's a hard device? In the parentheses here. Where? 711 uh, 1 permitted flotation devices, hard okay. or inflatable. Gotcha. inflatable. All right. Okay. If it's a hard device, where are you going to park it and not violate our rules? Well, Bill, a uh, hard device, I think, here is meant like the water mats, which are not really hard, but they're rigid. So they deflate the thing or something? They roll them up. <laughs> they roll them up and they put them on the dock. Again, oh, okay. today we have four 
of these trampolines, probably three they're out at any given moment. There's not that many, and they're all pulled into the shoreline. We also have a rule that says they have to be pulled to the shoreline and out of the way. And, and the majority of these are in very wide areas of the lake. And, you know, frankly, if you're that close to somebody's dock where you're cruising around the lake, I, I, I don't know. I mean, so it doesn't stick any further than somebody's dock with their boat parked in front of it. Okay. That, that satisfies that question. Yeah. Now, another thing is, is there any restrictions to where these can be used on the lake? And the reason I asked how, how, how do you mean that? Well, uh, could three or four people get out there in the middle of the lake and have a big party out no. there? No. So there is, you, there's you, rules well, as to where they can be used. There's no rule to that. But again, the water mats, one of the things we've got is you can't tow more than two people behind a boat on a device in the high speed zone. So you'll never have it in the high speed zone. Okay. Because that, that's an important safety issue there. Well, it's already there. You can't have more than two people on a towed device in the high speed zone. More than one. Yeah. More than one. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. 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 <laughs> Hey, Be, yeah, All right. strike yeah. that. You can't have more than one in the high speed zone on a towed device. All right, that's uh, satisfying. And you can't that's anchor cool. in the high speed zone either. So you can't anchor a tube or one of these devices in the high speed zone. Good. All right, thank you. Sure. Yes, sir. I'm a little bit confused here in terms of. Uh, sir, can you give your lot and your name again? Oh, again? again, Eric Ravenall, seventeen ninety. 95 yeah good enough um, for me um a little bit confused it says 20 by 20 and then in other places it says 20 by 26 no it says 26 max in any one direction so like think across the uh uh the pythagorean theorem across the uh, the angle the, the widest angle so that means it could be 10 feet wide and 26 feet long kind no of thing? it's 20 by 20 but you can have 26 across the middle so quarter corner to corner would be about 26 oh, feet corner to corner diagonal side yeah yeah again there's not that many of these and and frankly right. I, I don't right. think any of them even approach the 26 foot length right now again this is a rule that's been here i want to reiterate for about 15 years and we have about three people, four people maximum that have taken advantage of this because it's an expensive thing. Go ahead, Dave. Where, where it came from, the cancer treatment, you would have a, a round trampoline and then someone would put a fly or something off to one side of it, sticking out one side. Yeah. That, that may be only about four feet wide, maybe a jump of things. That's the kind of thing that would get you to the 26 feet. It was still put diagonally in the square. It still fits it. That's why that looks like a discrepancy. But yeah. Pythagorean theorem. Yeah. All the, way, all the way back to eighth grade. Um, yeah. So, and again, I want to I want to also point out that our lakes committee, and this is not me, but the, a handful of people on our committee went around and really kind of took an eye, a, a sort of an inventory of what's out there today. So we're trying to what's available on the lake today. We didn't want to exclude people that have things there today. I mean, this is not a witch hunt, as it were. Uh, we're just trying to, again, kind of create a situation where the Lakes Committee and the board have an opportunity to kind of control whether or not the things that people want to put in the water are good for Hidden Valley as a whole. Very good. Does anyone else have any questions? Can we take a vote? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 So that's unanimous, Eric. Oh, it wasn't as bad as the first one. Hey, 50% ain't bad. I'll take it today. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Thanks, Eric. Uh, Parks Committee, is, that me? is Amy Ayers here? Uh, Very good. Hi guys. I would be very quick. Ah, the poll's going to be open Saturday. Liner, we got a new liner. Uh, Twelve to eight. Um, we also what we did is move the fence back to have the concession stand open. 
if you're playing pickleball, tennis, basketball, at the playground, anything like that, you can now access the concession stand and don't have to go in and have any ID, anything like that. Get refreshments, anything you would like to do. Um, right now, the Snack Shack is open from noon to 730. Um, you know, that can change. That is ran by the swim team. So those proceeds go into them. They staff it. Do They take care of all. Um, swim lessons. Oh, wait a minute. What's next? Is that next? Swim lessons. Very important. Uh, swim lessons, they start June 2nd. Um, that will go into our first month. Uh, normally what they have done is the swim lessons were in July. Um, that I never understood and thought, hey, you know, let's get these kids some swim lessons in the very beginning. Um, I'm a little nervous because that water's going to be cold. We'll see how that works. Uh, it's pretty difficult to get little kids in the water anyway, let alone get them in there with cold water. Uh, we'll see how that works. But we are also offering July lessons also uh, and private swim lessons. Anyone that they need swim lessons, contact our uh, pool manager, Nora. Um, all that information is available online. Um, I also would like to, um, John Getzendanner, his wife, a lot of people, um, John, there's numerous people that have worked on our trails, um, a lot of volunteer hours and time and sweat uh, that went into the nature trails, and he put on this lovely schedule that these kids came out last Saturday. Um, we're hoping to do this again. We had a pretty good turnout. Um, so, uh, I just wanted to recognize John. We also worked and got the cemetery painted. So it's all white again that we do every year. I said, uh, we need to get that new decking up there. We don't have to paint that every year, but he does a great job. A lot of volunteer hours. So kudos to him. Could we have some recognition for John? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, speaking of that, the Bluebird Trail should be done. We're working on that. That's the last trail should be done. That's a tough one. Anybody that walks it. Um, also, um, if you don't mind me bringing up your name, Julie, about what we're thinking about. Um, we're trying to uh, get a special needs swing. This will be totally donation money. Won't come out of Hidden Valley money. Um, and Julie Mason is helping. We appreciate that. Um, so it's all, uh, we're looking at um, the garden club. Claudia's going to help out with them ladies. Uh, she said maybe a couple other clubs might help. I don't want to throw any names out yet until we kind of figure that out. Uh, but that's really nice. It's a nice community we have that we're all you know, going to try and help and make sure that our playgrounds are inclusive for all the kids to be able to participate. Um, so there's hey, that. Yes. Story. Why this? Pardon? Oh, oh. Uh, well, I was just checking on the playgrounds, and there was a young man. You're going to make me cry. Um, that was there and wasn't able to to participate, and so um, I thought. We, we have to get him a swing. Not just him, ev everyone should be able to swing. So, uh, are you wrapping me up? Were you, were you wrapping me up? Oh, well, I'm going to be longer now. Yes. Pardon? Yeah, we're going to. Yeah, and, and I was also thinking, um, and I know this might be crazy, but maybe even kind of like get adult softball game going or Kickball, my husband, of course, wants a dodgeball because <laughs> something violent. Um, but maybe, you know, anything, some, some kind of fundraiser thing. Nothing that we would take any money out of the valley. This would all be donation money. And, uh, you know, we try and do that, you know. And I think I, I think we should be fine. Should you know be how much they are? Uh, we're researching that right now. Um, it's not It's not terribly bad. It shouldn't be that much. 
one swing? Or one? Yeah, we would. I mean, we. I mean, we could do more. Um, I talked to Jason on maintenance, and we were looking, and I thought it's. I was at really trying to look how accessibility would be. Um, we were thinking maybe we could take one baby swing out by the pool, and then you wouldn't have to build a separate structure. Um, so we're just. And Julie's helping, and I'm sure she's got a lot. And I didn't really want to, we don't really know yet. And I know Julie's got a lot of information and she's been working on it. I just kind of wanted to bring it up and let everyone aware that, you know, we're working on projects. Everybody's doing stuff, right, Claudia? Yeah. And Julie and Jason and Dave, he's hiding. Um, and I know I'm forgetting something. I wasn't very good on my notes. <laughs> I thought this would be a big meeting for other stuff, but pool's going to be open Saturday. Oh, and pickleball people, we did put a new, uh, moved a uh, picnic table over there in case there's a party going on at the shelter. So we're trying to figure out, probably going to put some gravel down there. It's not, it's something, it's not a, but it's a picnic table if there's a party going on at the shelter. You're welcome. That's it. See you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Uh, safety, security, and elections. Bonnie Starks. Hi. I'm Bonnie Starks. Lot 2,800. There's a question. I'm supposed to make 1.3. Sorry. That's okay. It opens on Saturday. Yes. I'm only working. No white guards. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll okay. have to bring it up. Oh, uh, we got We got They have to call the manager. They no, call Nora. Nora, yeah. Yeah. And Nora didn't get back with them. I uh, think that's my understanding. I'm just, uh, I'm told she can't hear me. Oh, she can't hear me. She can't Just want to mention it. Give your kid this, this number. Write this down here. Okay. On your paper. Yeah. <laughs> we can move on. I'll, I'll write down this. <laughs> Thank you for bringing it up there. Okay, so Bonnie, you could please continue. Okay. Um, I have resigned as chair of SSNE, Safety, Security, and Elections, to avoid a conflict of interest because of the, of the board. Um, and the Dave Bushmiller has accepted the position and I will be his vice chair. He was my vice chair. So we're just swapping positions. Uh, we went through the procedure, nominated the committee and second and all that. And the committee unanimously voted yes on this change. So from now on, Dave will be representing and then when he can't, I will also. <laughs> Our last meeting, we met at the golf club as the POA building was not available. Those members present were myself, Becky Lords, <laughs> Jenny Boyer, Don Norris, and Linda Conley. After reviewing the deputy's report, we were told about the woman who passed $100 counterfeit bills at our community garage sale. The deputies got the description of her car and eventually caught up with her. She was then taken into custody and the deputies were able to return the residents' money and their items. They commented that if we had the flock camera system, this arrest would have been easier. But they still, they did a great job. <laughs> to, to do, yeah. It's really taking it in. <laughs> Good job, Jason. Thank you. Or that piece. Can't do job. I then relayed to the committee that I completed their request for the flock system, the flock service and submitted it to the proper authority. Now, I know, you know, funds aren't there right now, 
but I wanted to get our request in, in the queue for, um, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it would make us a virtual uh, gated community and we would be part of uh, what's being built from Ohio through Dearborn County. So um, anyway, uh, I've got a presentation which I gave to the finance committee and to when we had uh, several, yes. Can you just share how much it is? Like yes, it is the first year with the installation would be about 21,000. Then every year after that, it would be like 19,000 and something. And this is a rental system. We wouldn't have to buy cameras for each entrance. We have two cameras, one incoming, one outgoing. And this system, uh, connects to the police system that um, they can identify cars, like if they get a notice on, on their their regular, what's the system it's called on the end? 5X, we enter stolen, stolen vehicle, stolen anything, a vehicle that went out of that 5X, uh, and it goes out nationwide, and it puts that plate in over our MVP, which computers in the car, and that's that I don't know. And because of everything from uh, silver alerts to uh, amber alerts of the vehicle and So once that part of the uh, passes that camera, it'll work surrounding area. You have a time, time stamp of when it passes and everything. Okay, they're, they're neat. They are neat. Harrison uh, Police Department just got down. And I was, while working in West Harrison, got to listen to how it worked. And uh, they got a stolen car out of. Uh, was it out of Dayton, oh, Ohio? Out of yeah. Dayton, Ohio, um, at the Home Depot in Harrison. So they crossed to, uh, over. Harrison has like they have ten of them. They have eight installed, and they're working on ten of them. They got them on New Haven Drive Fort by the interstate, and it, they know when a vehicle that's wanted in a crime comes into the Bay area. They're pretty cool. I mean, it's and uh, it's not just a license plate reader; it's a vehicle reader. It reads the vehicle with the stickers. It'll read stickers, dents, whatever. And that's not shared with everybody, it's shared with law enforcement or an HOA community. So that has AI built into it. It's yeah. not going to be an additional fund no. for someone to monitor. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Yeah. And it, it does not um, photograph inside the vehicle. You know, the driver is not identifiable. So that protects your privacy. It's just a license plate. And the, and the description of the car, but it's it's not anything, and it'll just be at the entrances. So we will know, you know, we got four entrances, so we'll need eight cameras, and we're running these cameras. We're not putting out hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy good cameras like this. And uh, if we had an in-house system, then we'd have to have more technology, like Jeff was talking about. So, and being a rental system, they install it too. Our maintenance department doesn't have to do anything. If the cameras go out, they're replaced. So it's, uh, and it's also the camera system, would, it's in Harrison. If we had it, it would be here. Lawrenceburg has it. Other places in Dearborn County has it. And I understand Greendale is in talks to possibly get it also. So that would be like a whole avenue. Like if a crime was committed, we'd know about it and it instantly our people would be on alert as the whole system, you know. So it's it's a way we can be gated without having gates. Okay, but we have to have we have to have the money for it first. Uh, our primary goals as a committee for this coming year are the election panel structure, the Halloween dan danger at our pool, uh, reviewing specific bylaws and procedures which have changed over the years and all safety issues. Jenny Boyer is working on the election panel and Don has been involved in the pool danger on Halloween 
and how to address it. And he's working with uh, Jason and, and the, our police. Becky, Linda, and myself will be looking at pertinent changes to our areas of responsibilities, the bylaws. We will keep you informed as to our progress and our next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, June 13th at 6.30 upstairs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Scott Wagner, 1146, Lotman. I just wondered when's the last time our fire hydrant has been flow tested in the valley? I've been here a year, I've never seen it done before. I just wondered. Is that, is that right, fire department, or is that your maintenance on us? That would be VRUC, first of all. Okay, Dave said he'll check on that. Was there any other Just, questions for uh, safety, security, and elections? Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I would say that, you know, we made a motion and it passed that there would be a one time, okay. you know, can't, I really can't predict the future, unfortunately, yeah. but, exactly. you know. Yeah. Another one said if we had an increase on our dock fees and the, the docks cost $28,000, we would have to be reaching two years of dock fees. I'm just reading the motion. Well, I don't, uh, there's nothing in the works to change dock fees currently that I'm aware of. And one of them is the way we get the Zoom questions, and I'm going to work on Rich on the that. Because one of the Zoom questions that we're going to deal with, no one with their name, lot number, so this could be anyone that's Zoom bombing us. So I want to be cautious on the read. So I'll work with Rich that any questions that come through Zoom, so folks that are listening to Zoom, will require their name, lot number, instead of Samsung, you know, 22678. Okay. Know, so we'll make sure that we get real people. So here's a Zoom work as this grows, a challenge you're going to have. One of these questions coming in on that is they've got 10 to 12 people for outdoor block party. Mm. So you're going to have to manage. Yeah. You have to manage yeah. like where's it coming from. So good point. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Before that's work. Okay, Bonnie, I think. Okay. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Amy's here. Oh. Yes, uh, Amy. Before you guys decide on the block, I mean, I have a concern on a lot of things about it. Privacy. But a big thing for me is the money on the renting. I know you say it's only $20,000 a year, but that is a rental. That's not something that we own. And so $20,000 every year, five years, we're at $100,000. And we're just sitting here talking about we don't have any money. We're increasing our dues and all of this. I'm concerned about that. Um, I'm not a fan of renting stuff. I like to own my stuff. So um, I just, will that be something that we all discuss before we go and sign a contract on something like that? And is that a contract <laughs> with this company? I believe it is a yeah. two year contract. So we're already, so it's $40,000 and uh, automatic. Yeah. But if we bought our own cameras, it would be outrageous. Right, but we already have cameras, right? No, not, to, not of this caliber. Well, I mean, I know. The uh, one on the state line and is it Lakeview or whatever where you're coming in? Um, and I'm usually up about two in the morning and they're never lit up. So once again, we're spending money. Right. Yeah, these cameras will be they're solar powered. Now I already looked at that. I know. Oh, okay, okay. 
that cost. And I know we put a new camera at Georgetown in Morningside. We put a new camera at State Line and Lakeview, right? Am I correct, Dave? Right? Yeah. Sorry, what was that? New cameras at Lakeview. Is it Longview? Lakeview or Longview? Lakeview and State Line. Lakeview and State Line, Georgetown and Morningside, right? We just did that. So we do have cameras, and I'm sure we probably have one down at the guard shack, right? Or security. I know we renamed it. <laughs> but so we do have that, and those are new, right? Uh, Within the last couple of years? I consider that new. Yeah. So I don't I don't know if they'll work with the new fiber. Okay, see, and there again, that's something that we do. Well, we buy stuff, we do stuff, we buy it doesn't work, we have to buy it again. Amy, some of those cameras are are getting old. Not all of them. Well, but two years ago. There are no, no, I'm not talking two years. This stuff started about eight years ago. No, 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 no. No, I know those, but I'm saying. There are cameras around this all over the place. So right, but there are a lot the of them stuff. that are getting old. With, now, the newer, ones, cameras, the newer ones, the newer ones that just came in the next couple few years, they can continue to work when we connect this up into the main office here. Okay. Yes. In all due respect, with the changes in technology and how fast technology is changing, I do believe we are better to rent. Because in order to keep up, we all know that just year's item is obsolete in three months. So I think it is a much better idea to rent. That way, the technology changes on the renting company, and we're just paying the fee to use it. I think that's a much better choice. Yes. Yes, sir. I work as a volunteer with King, and we do a lot of grants. And I'm wondering on this subject and a lot of other subjects, whether or not we have people actually writing and applying for grants, because there's several available. Uh, there's even available from REMC. Uh, yeah, so we're very interested in anything that you can share with us concerning grants, but generally speaking, because we're a private community, we are seldom eligible for any kind of a grant. Uh, a lot of these grants are for private uh, for a private club. So we would love for so you to share that with us. The ones from the uh, the the the, the uh, rural electric company are there are, are for private communities. There's a lot of this available, and I would think a community like ours should have a person. I can't do it. Uh, I'm, I, I've seen them. I've seen the farms to do them. Uh, but but somebody who knows how to apply for these grants can pick up an awful lot of money. This is exactly the kind of thing that we should be able to get money from the feds. And what's your name again? Paul Neeland. Oh, Paul Neeland. Okay. And could you give him your phone number and stuff when after the meeting? Sure. Okay. That'd be great. And I have an answer for the gentleman who wanted to know about the, um, um, what was it, Dave? The, the fire hydrants. The fire hydrants. Um, Dave found out that uh, they get inspected once a year, and the next time is going to be July. Is that your case? Oh, Jay. Okay. okay. Thank you all. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Civic Club, Kevin. This is fun. This is fun group, right? And we got the summer coming up. Uh, Friday on the beach from six to nine. Music, maybe some hot dogs, and just hang out. It's nothing really fancy, but everybody's welcome. Pool parties. They start next month. I don't have a calendar, Rich. You have a calendar by chance? Uh, from 8 to midnight, once a month, starting in June. It's fun, just uh, music and hanging out, BYOB. And the luau is August 5th, first Saturday in August from 6 to 12. You guys know about that, right? Two hogs coming up. Labor Day Bash, we're really putting some time into that with some new ideas, new 
puppet shows, uh, whatever, magicians, all kinds of fun stuff. A little bit different than what we've done. It'll just be one day. Uh, it'll probably be a Saturday, I think. So other than that, that's what we got coming up. Anything Rich. else you guys want to do? Our meetings are the third Tuesday at 6.30. Come out. We've got ideas. We'd love to have them. Kevin, can I, Rich, are you going to publish something uh, with the dates that, okay. There, there's a calendar, right, Rich? It's on the website, yeah. and all the events are on the website. Kevin's the minutes. Perfect. <laughs> Plus the minutes. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, judicial panel, Rick Paul. <clears throat> Not here, Mr. Paul. Here, let's see. Right, yep. I haven't seen him here. Okay, I see him. no judicial panel tonight. Do we have any old business? Do we have any new business? I'm sorry, I'm not sure where this falls. Uh, Julie Mason, Mason Law two 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 four. Um, I guess I just want to. There's a lot of people here tonight. I feel like some of that has to do with the board changeover and the things that happened prior to and consequently after. Uh, there's lots of information and stuff floating around outside of um, outside of this room or outside of this meeting. Um, I was really hoping it would have been addressed. Uh, have a spot in this meeting to be addressed differently instead of just in your opening statements. I, I feel like it maybe should have been open for some conversation, uh, maybe a little feedback from the other people involved. Um, just a bit disappointed that this board is starting up and I feel there's just kind of one-sided information given here and um, just disappointed in that. And I just wanted to make my... Uh, Feelings known on that. Well, I understand. Thank you. Yes. Matt Eusen, number um, or lot number uh, four five nine. Um, <clears throat> most of the people in this room probably aren't aware that I sent a letter to this board uh, in two thousand and one, June two thousand and one, um, citing Indiana case law that the way that this board. Uh, or the way that our community, our HOA, changes bylaws is not in accordance to the state of Indiana law. Um, in the state of Indiana, the case law is that bylaws are changed by a majority vote of the member of the membership of the POA, not of, of a majority of the board of directors. And the reason that this happens is so that in small communities like ours, boards aren't stacked by special interest groups and then bylaws changed because of those special interest groups. So I'm gonna be sending a letter to the board, um, reiterating that again. And I think that it's time that the board takes it seriously, that bylaws have not been changed in accordance with state law for many, many years. I think that, um, and I appreciate you addressing what you addressed uh, to start the meeting, but I think that that some of the nuance is important, especially in light of the case law that I just pointed out about stacking boards. Um, could I just ask some clarification on, on this campaign donation with Mr. Horn? Um, when did he receive the donation? And then it was rumored that he paid it back. Um, is, is that in fact true? Did he pay money back? And, um, and if so, what was the timing of that? Uh, the exact date that they got the signs was when the campaign was going on last year. And the, the two of the, the signs they bought was not paid back because I there was no wrong in receiving them. Uh, according to Mr. Eubanks. According to our bylaws and also uh, what I was showed by someone was... Uh, First, I was told there was a bylaw violation. Then it was, well, it's in the PLA handbook. Well, the PLA handbook states, HBL funds cannot be used for any political campaign contributions, including board of directors. 
the key in that is HBL POA funds. They were money from the fishing game club. There was no POA funds. So um, it's um, if I were to run for the board, let's say, and I receive money from a special interest group, I can use that money to fund my campaign. I don't know what you can do. I'm just saying, I'm, you, I answered your questions. What it was, it was during the campaign. I don't know the exact date. And the money was not paid back because there was nothing, there was no wrongdoing. Okay. Um, can I just finish my, this is Matt. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to keep us separate here. Uh, um, uh, I'm, I, I brought this stuff up two years ago, uh, Mr. Dutton, uh, completely separate from, well, it wasn't chicken shit to me, Mr. Dutton. Um, and then uh, as it relates to um, what you brought up regarding um, not having a secret meeting, <clears throat> talking about board member replacements and um, and positions on the board, such as the roles of president, vice president, treasurer, secretary. Um, our bylaws don't specifically address that in, in, in my review of them as far as how that would be conducted. So um, I understood you say that it wasn't a secret meeting, but was there public notice and, and was all the board present? Uh, I found out that a group of people were getting together one hour before the meeting, and I, I went. I just showed up. Mm -hmm. Wasn't my meeting. Understood. Um, okay. So there was no, the people that were getting together who happened to be on the board, um, there was no public notice that they were getting together to discuss Not those no, roles. Sure. Um, one thing on that, Matt, prior to that meeting, on two or three occasions following board executive meetings or whatever, I was approached by a board member outside the parking lot asking for my support for him to be president when it came up. Those meetings weren't publicly announced. Sure. Okay. So, I mean, I, I get that. Things happen, so. Yeah, I get that. I mean, I've, I've served on right. boards as well. Right. And I, I get that there has to be some conversation to. And, that, and that's all that was. That yeah. Night. I think we're just trying to avoid his collusion. Well, there and, was no collusion. Okay. Yeah. I did talk to Jeff one on one. I did talk to Ken one on one. Said, hey, I want to be president. Yeah. I need support. And they said yes. The night the three of us met, Ken said that up. So, hey, Doug, let's go over and have a beer. And I invited Jeff. Mm -hmm. I showed up, and Ken told me, Jeff's bringing Bob. I said, that's not right. That should not be going on. Bob showed up and I said, Bob, you should not be here. He got up and a little bit disturbed and I can understand. Because when he wanted to leave, I told you're already here, you may as well stay. So it was sarcastic. He took it as an invitation. I understand that. During the meeting, I mentioned a couple of times I was not comfortable with it. And I'm, I voted for, for Grant, but I made a comment. Why is Grant not here also? You're not a member of the board, you should not be here. So once that all happened, kind of blew up a little bit in my mind. This was wrong. So our next board meeting, I told Scott and Pat what went happen what happened. And I felt bad about it. I had a resignation letter in my hand that night at work to walk out because of what I did. I told Scott I was the, the leader there. And I did the wrong thing. He goes, What do you mean you're the leader? I said, You're the president, I was the vice president, I was the senior officer there. It should not have happened. So I was ready to resign right there. So we had a discussion in that board meeting that that would not happen again. That we would not have that discussion again without the rest of the board being aware of what we're doing. After the election happened, I had no evidence of any other board meetings happening or side discussions happening. But when we selected the next president, it was a hostile takeover for the president. We tried to have discussions on it. We were forced to a vote with no discussion of what the goals were going to be, who wanted to be president, or one. We were forced to vote, and we were voted three to two that Mr. Clark would be president. I was voted two to three against of being president. 
Scott made a motion. Let's discuss this about this. And I second it. We were voted down and we were not allowed to discuss it. That it was already decided to who the president was going to be. I was assigned a committee that refused to remove their time off of 4 p.m. in the afternoon during normal working hours. I was assigned that, so I can't go to those. After that meeting, I was invited to a board meeting at 4 p.m. I said, I can't come before. I've said that multiple times. I came to an ad hoc meeting on the uh, fiber because uh, I come to those like the work of Microsoft, I'm very geeky, very steady. Those have maybe about once a quarter. Mm -hmm. If I can wage that around my meeting time to work, I work from home. I came. I was questioned at that meeting. Why can't you stay? I said, I've got an hour with my customer. I'm here for an hour and I got to go back. When Scott resigned, they said, hey, we need to pick another board member. When can we meet? I said, and I'm, at this point, I was already ready to quit. I said, you three go ahead. It's obvious my vote will not count. <coughs> so the way I was treated and the disrespect I had at that board meeting in select president. I was on my road out. I sent, sent several hints via email that I am not happy. Which one of you reached out to me? The only one that reached out to me was Jeff. After I revoked. Not a single one of them. Granted, I won't hold you to that. You're from Newport. You had no history of what's going on before you. <clears throat> but I didn't, hear, I didn't hear from Ken. I didn't hear from Bob. The only one I heard from was Jeff. Right. That's why I quit. I, I, I work full time. I run a YouTube or a photography club. I do some film business on the side. I am so happy to have my time back to be on this side of the table. I will support you guys 110%. I want you to be successful. Let's get this all behind us. Yeah. All right. Okay. Then, yeah. So a lot of what Bob said is true. I disagree with some of the things you said on your report in there. Uh, I have no idea if you guys met before. It looked like you guys had a good plan when you came in. But I'm sure if you met, or you just talked, like walking on the street like we did on the left meetings, that's fine. But the, that I felt like I was being pushed out. And I felt I would no longer be effective as a board member. Because anything I wanted to vote for, there was a three to against me, no matter what. No matter how good it was, I I, I felt like I would be a son, so that's why I'm on this side of the desk. Right. That's my story. All right, I'd like to add something if if I could uh, regarding the meeting at Willie's that you, in your words, were, was unethical and all that. Correct. Yep. All that right. Was. I spoke the same one. I understand that, but you came to that meeting. Willingly, and you came to that meeting with the with with the intentions, and you did to ask us to support you for the presidency. I didn't think it was on other phones that we had a. Well, that's what I'm saying. It, I I I I was just thinking the only reason it was unethical no, to you was no. because you didn't get the endorsement. No, <laughs> it wasn't on it. It wasn't on it. Wasn't wait a minute. Let me finish. It was not unethical to you. Until someone else got the endorsement, I, not, it appeared that, that way. That's, that's all I'm saying. Exactly. All right. I would be sitting up there today. Right. I would be sitting up there today if the meeting that we had chose the officer or something. You gave us the opportunity to vote for the president or not. We were all allowed to vote, not discuss. I was shut down from that. I was shut down with the man meeting at four o'clock. I think I got it through, but I can't anymore. I think future votes that would come next. I appreciate that color, Mr. Gabbard. Um, I'm just going to propose in my letter some language that may be looked at and added to the bylaws to address these types of issues so that we don't run into this situation again. That's the only point I was trying to make. Yeah, I may make a comment about that, that, that the things that cannot be changed by law or the things that are in the Articles of Incorporation. It's my understanding from our attorneys that the bylaws can be changed by the board. That's the reason that we work very hard to get the 15% rule put into the Articles of Incorporation so that no future board could come along and wipe that rule out. Mm -hmm. 
if anyone's not familiar, what that rule is, is that if any board wants to spend more than 15% on, on, you know, fixing up the front entrance or whatever, uh, they have to come to you for a vote. We, it took us a while. It took us a couple of years to get that through, but we got it on the articles of incorporation. So it can't be done away with. I, I can appreciate that, but, um, uh, that can still be challenged in, in the state of Indiana. And, um, there's case law to support the fact that you would still need a majority of the members of the POA to change a bylaw. Yeah. Okay. You're the attorney. I'm not just, just bringing it up. Um, okay. Okay, I don't I don't really have anything else other than some language surrounding finances and and how dues are raised so that we don't have these one off assessments. And so if we could just tie it to something uh, and I'll, I'll propose language on that for your consideration, but that okay. that uh, it shouldn't be the responsibility of this board to decide what what uh, is going to raise or lower our dues. Uh, that should be tied to something external, such as core inflation or CPI or, you know, some some standard that's set outside of this of this room. That's all I got. I'd like to I'd like to Scott Giska. I just want to finish up so that all the all the facts are on the table because everybody's got a memory of what they think happened. It's the reason we have minutes. It's the reason we moved to minutes in executive meetings. And there's a couple things that are being lost here, and that is we had had a conversation a week before the annual meeting about what the process was going to be for selecting officers. We used it the year prior because when I joined five years ago, it felt like it was already predetermined. And Bob, you told me point blank in our executive meeting that it was predetermined. Right? Correct? When three people, when three board members make a decision, that's it. Yeah. Right. I, I, I but it's a yes we or no were one. Happy with Pat with the job that Pat was doing, and okay. she continued to be president. Yes. Okay. okay. But I went under the guidance, right? Because I got coached under Pat, and I stated this, and you disagreed. Matter of fact, you tried to take the meeting over before I was actually out of the presence chair, and you got shut down on that. Yes, you did by Jared Eubanks. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Right. And so I'm I'm going off of a well respected ten plus year veteran, and the bottom line is the new person coming in goes into the at large slot. And that's, that's how I've been operating for no, five years no rule and to you, that effect. and you decided to change it. No, okay. no rule. To so that that's, effect. that's, that's that fact. The other piece I want to share that I think everybody needs to understand is that can this issue with you, in my opinion, and when you referenced somebody came to you, it was me. I tried to handle professionally, but as a board president, when you have a complaint filed on an individual that was on you, it is your responsibility to investigate it. And it's interesting to me, and unfortunately it's not here, and this, this conversation won't end tonight, and I don't want to get into a personal battle publicly, but I went to Jared Eubanks first to understand, do we have a violation or not? Right, That's, that's my responsibility at that point, right or wrong as board president. The guidance that you guys are now getting is very different than the guidance I was given. And Pat, over there nodding her head, we've had this problem for five years, which is something the community is going to have to deal with because it's very difficult to govern when you get two different opinions. So I went to Ken, and here's what here's where this kind of falls apart, and I'm, I'm glad to move on. I personally think, Ken, you should walk away, and that's a large contingent because I think we're going to prove that what you did was wrong. And no, but let me finish. And so when I went to you, I ask you, the smartest thing to do, just pay it back and be done. It's easy. And you agreed to do that. And I've got a paper trail of that conversation, and we have minutes. I don't care what you got, Scott. I did pay it back because I found out I broke this. You, you said I broke a bylaw. Yeah. You wouldn't tell me which one. And I said, well, tell me what bylaw I broke. Oh, I'll get back to you later. Oh, well, here it was this PLA handbook. So, Ken, uh, don't, so, don't twist stuff around, Scott. No, the language right. was no, listen, there's no twisting. That's what I want to sure. get through. No, there listen. There's no bylaw. I know you listen. There was no bylaw violation. There was no handbook violation. The only thing I violated was I don't know what it was, whatever you come up with. Okay, in your so mind. this is fact. I didn't violate any bylaw or handbook. So, what did I do wrong, Scott? Okay, so you asked me where the language was. 
Can I finish? Thank you. All right, well, I'm going to ask you, what bylaw was broken? What handbook? So you asked me where the link. What bylaw was broken? Can I answer the question? Yes, answer. What bylaw was broken? Can you stop talking? Then I can answer answer the what bylaw was broken. There wasn't a bylaw. Oh, there wasn't a bylaw broken? Oh, okay. Okay, guys. Hey, listen, guys. Yeah. No, Bob, Bob, let me make one. Now, what state is done with us, man? Let's rest. So the bottom line is, Ken, you know what the truth was. And I dug up the language for you and gave it to you, and you'd agreed to pay back. That's all I'd ask for. And that was the guidance I got from Jared. That's all I can do. Okay. Thank you've maneuvered. Thank you for your advice. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Is there any other new business to come before them? Okay. Do we have a motion for adjournment? I'll, I'll make that motion. Second it. Adjourn. Who seconded it? I did. Thank you.